President Trump is not meeting with the family of Jacob Blake Jr. during his visit to Kenosha, Wisconsin today, a visit that is not welcomed by some. Local leaders have asked the president not to come. Many are concerned his presence could incite more unrest. Several residents gave CBS News their take on the president's visit. He has, in my opinion, done nothing but created um, an atmosphere of division and hatred and distrust amongst all races. I just don't see a good reason for him to come here at all, ever, but especially not now. I think that it's wonderful. I think it shows that he cares about us, he cares about America, he cares about Kenosha and the devastation that we have faced here in the, in the light of all of these riots. I hope he sees the truth, the reality of what's really going on out here and not just what's going on in his in his head or what he think you know what's going on. He can actually see what what we the people of us African Americans what we go through every day. Today's Senate primary in Massachusetts pits one of the state's biggest political names against one of its longtime legislators. Incumbent Senator Ed Markey is looking to fend off a challenge from Congressman Joe Kennedy III. This race has been one of the biggest focuses of the Democratic Party's left wing since the end of the presidential primary. But the Green New Deal co-sponsor is up against one of the country's most successful political families. As Ed O'Keefe reports, the Kennedys have a perfect record 20 26 and 0 in Massachusetts Democratic primaries. Usually, when a Kennedy runs for office in Massachusetts, their victory is all but assured. But not this year. <laughs> Congressman Joe Kennedy's challenging Senator Ed Markey in what's become a bitterly personal contest. You, you it's just said that you deserve justice. It is at a time. They, they it, didn't it, get it from let, your let office. Let him respond. The 39 year old, a grandson of the late Robert F. Kennedy, believes the 74 year old senator isn't doing enough to represent the state. He missed over 50% of the votes in this critical time of COVID-19, a public health and economic catastrophe. Kennedy only recently started playing up his family legacy. It's a fight in his blood. And mostly he's questioning Markey's record on civil rights and votes for things like the Iraq War. Markey, who's been in politics for more than 40 years, has gone back to the future, talking up his decades of service and introducing the liberal Green New Deal with one of his most prominent supporters, New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Ed Markey is a proud and, and strong progressive champion for working families. Markey's also doing something once considered unthinkable by a Massachusetts Democrat. He's taking swings at the Kennedy legacy. We asked what we could do for our country. We went out. We did it. With all due respect, it's time to start asking what your country can do for you. Still, Kennedy's supporters have confidence in his abilities. And every time they come to, a new Kennedy comes to office, something happens. For some reason, something happens. Something changes. But Markey is seeing strong support from younger voters. Ed Markey has proved time and time again that he is always forward-thinking and is a progressive that we all deserve and need in the Senate. Ed O'Keefe, CBS News. The Texas Attorney General is suing Harris County over its plans to send mail-in ballot applications to registered voters. Harris County covers Houston and the surrounding area. It has over 2 million registered voters. Earlier this month, the county announced plans to automatically send all those voters an application for a mail-in ballot. But the Texas Supreme Court ruled earlier this year fear of contracting coronavirus does not qualify as a reason to vote by mail. Liberty University says it is launching an independent investigation into former President Jerry Falwell Jr.'s nearly 13 years at the university. The investigation comes after Falwell resigned last week following allegations of sexual impropriety. The Evangelical University's school board says it has hired an outside firm to investigate all facets of the university's operations while Falwell was president. This includes all financial, real estate, and legal matters under his watch. McDonald's is facing new legal trouble. More than 50 black former franchise owners are accusing the company of racial discrimination. The lawsuit claims the fast food giant denied 52 black owners the same opportunities as white owners. It alleges the company pushed black owners toward less desirable and less lucrative locations, resulting in significant financial loss. 
The group says they were eventually forced to close or sell more than 200 locations between 2010 and this year. McDonald's denies the accusations. A disturbing new report shows murder is on the rise in big cities despite the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. The study, conducted by the National Commission on COVID-19 and Criminal Justice, shows homicides are up 37 percent in 20 cities across the country. And according to the Chicago Tribune's homicide tracker, at least 497 people have been killed across the city just this year. Now, that is already 145 more people than all of last year. CBS News national correspondent Errol Barnett has the latest. What have the past few months been like for you? Uh, A tragic couple of months. Pastor Donovan Price doesn't need statistics to tell him violence in Chicago is up since the pandemic began. You see, he goes to crime scenes in his underserved community to comfort shattered families, often victims of random violence. In your view... Why are things uh, apparently getting worse? There's a lot of things that perhaps are coming to head. We were living in a war zone before the pandemic. And so a pandemic on top of a war zone, on top of of systemic issues, um, is, of course, um, a problem on top of a problem. If we do nothing, it seems to me we're in for several more months of elevated violence. Criminologist Richard Rosenfeld is a professor at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. He and his team recently released this study on COVID-19 and crime. It analyzed 11 criminal offenses in 27 cities and found during the pandemic, domestic violence and aggravated assault rose. And homicides spiked 37% from May to June, with the most dramatic increases in Chicago, Philadelphia and Milwaukee. In July, the Chicago Tribune reported at least 107 people were killed, making it the most violent month there in nearly three decades. One now has to speculate about why we see those increases. It could be because of uh, the impact of the pandemic on police activity. And also one has to consider the fact that in many cities, the police were redeployed from their normal patrols to address protest activity. In late May, protests began nationwide against police brutality following the death of George Floyd. Protests recently erupted in Kenosha, Wisconsin over the police shooting of Jacob Blake. A recent poll found confidence in law enforcement has hit a record low. U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr recently tried to blame the crime uptick on some protesters' demands to defund the police. I think it also is related to the efforts that we've recently seen to demonize police and to defund their work. The NYPD is moving officers where they're needed, engaging with the community more deeply to fight crime, uh, increasing gun arrests. In New York City, homicides in the last month are up 50% compared to the same time last year and 34% year to date, with 280 murders so far in 2020. I think it's something that we've ignored for a long time, gangs. But the real problem in America lies in handguns. Eric Adams is the Brooklyn Borough president and a former NYPD captain. He's calling for a multi-state gun task force to address the violence. Do we ask our police officers in general to do too much? Yes, we do. No matter what happens, we immediately want to call the police to handle it. That is not the form of policing that we need. We need to have greater crisis management teams. We need to have young people be involved in dealing with low-level nuisances, and then our faith-based institution must become more proactive. Back in Chicago, Pastor Donovan is grappling with the most innocent victims of crime, children. This is where it came out. Mm -hmm. That's where the bullet exited her body, Mm. out of the front, and it entered through her back. Mm -hmm. That's good. Wow. On June 30th, Pastor Donovan was there minutes after three-year-old Diana was shot in her back while playing outside her home. Diana survived, but no one has been arrested for her shooting. Deirdre Taylor is her mother. Do you remember that day? You remember when you got shot? What do you remember about how that felt and what was happening around you? Outside. 
What would you say to people who hear about these shootings? I was saying, it's serious. It's no joke. It's important to know that more than a bullet gets penetrated, lives get penetrated. And in this world, in this city, you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution right now. Um, there's, there's no in-between. California renters will be shielded from evictions for five more months. Governor Gavin Newsom and the state legislature approved an extension to the eviction moratorium Monday for renters unable to pay due to the pandemic. Landlords can start collecting unpaid rent in March of next year. Newsom said the law also protects homeowners from foreclosure. The bill goes into effect immediately. We're going to take a quick break now, but when we return, tributes continue to pour in for Chadwick Boseman. As we learn, his career might not have happened without the help of another Hollywood heavyweight. You're streaming CBSN, CBS News, always on. Old Town Philly's back again. Do the little East Coast swing. Boys to men going off. Not too hard and not too soft. Boom, boom, bada. Boom, boom, bada. That video was posted to Twitter by actor Josh Gad, who starred alongside Chadwick Boseman in the 2017 biopic on the life of Thurgood Marshall, entitled Marshall. It is just one of the many heartwarming tributes that continue to pour in for Boseman, who passed away on Friday after a private four-year battle with colon cancer. The 43-year-old actor was beloved across the country. Friends, family, and co-stars have shared stories about the incredible talent and presence the Black Panther star had both on and off the set. With his passing, we're learning more about his life and legacy. Bozeman has credited the launch of his career to another legendary actor, Denzel Washington. Imagine receiving the letter that your tuition for that summer was paid for and that your benefactor was none other than the dopest actor on the planet. An offering from a sage and a king is more than silver and gold. It is a seed of hope, a bud of faith. There is no Black Panther without Denzel Washington. In a statement provided to Entertainment Tonight, Denzel Washington said, quote, he was a gentle soul and a brilliant artist who will stay with us for eternity through his iconic performances over his short yet illustrious career. God bless Chadwick Boseman. Boseman's Black Panther co-star Michael B. Jordan also took to Instagram with an emotional post saying, quote, I wish we had more time. You showed me how to be better, honor purpose, and create legacy. He went on to say, I am dedicating the rest of my days to live the way you did, with grace, courage, and no regrets. Rest in power, brother.